what more could a little leader want? It's weird that I've never read anything about that before. It's just like an immersive fishbowl to be like, <laughs> if you watch my channel, you will like this book. Go on, play me. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena and if you haven't been here before, it's a weird time to cut in, but you're welcome, take a beanbag. Um, I talk on my channel about loads of things, the climate crisis, deep thoughts that I've been having about the world, um, being in your 20s in general, advice about that. Um, but, uh, but you know, how it all started, where we all came from, the, the origin story of my channel is books. And I like to check in with you still on what I'm reading. Um, and a lot of the thoughts that I have that make all the other videos possible are inspired by things that I've read in books, like the either the kind of like emotions or things that people are going through or like in the non-fiction sector, like actual facts that are blowing my mind and, I, and I'm inspired to make videos on them. So even though I know not everybody watches these videos, I feel like they are core of the channel. Without them, we wouldn't have the rest. <laughs> Um, the unsung ecosystem uh, that make the rest of the videos breathe. So um, I am doing a summer wrap up. Uh, I've done a winter wrap up and a spring wrap up. We are now covering July, August and September. I'm doing Q1, Q2, Q3 because the nine to five office system has brainwashed me, the thing that I was part of for most of my twenties and I'm not yet free of that Q1, Q, Q1 Q2 kind of system. Um, but I'm gonna be using Storygraph. If you don't know what Storygraph is, I've got a video all about it, link up there. Uh, but it's like, it's like a less stress inducing, more ethical version of Goodreads. And it generates these kind of stats for us. So um, as I have been for the other wrap ups, I'm gonna be going through some of the stats um, of how I've been reading. I'm gonna tell you a few of the things that I've been reading because I've been reading some great stuff and I am excited to gossip with you about it. Um, so grab a cup of coffee, maybe a hot cocoa, um, snuggle up and buckle in because we are on the book train. Chew. Oh. Chew. My reading goal for this year is 100 books. Doable, I think. I'm not as far ahead as I was in the last video, but I am still three books ahead, which is excellent. I've read 71 books now. I think I'd read like 52 last time we talked about this. <laughs> I am, however, behind by 1,675 pages. So I think that maybe my reading goal of 30,000 pages a year was a little bit ambitious, but I do have some 500 pages on the horizon because of some of the bloody books that you guys prescribed me. And then I went to the bookshop and I was like, holy hell, these are long. So here I am, the Jonathan Safran Foa and flight behaviors I know are like quite long books and I'm also still reading Black and British which I think is about 700 pages so I have I have hope and I'm not going to change my goal am I no no I'm not going to change my goal now but if I fail at it then um it will be a good learning for 2022 which at this point sounds like a futuristic date doesn't it but it is only in fact <laughs> three months away <laughs> Moods and pace have stayed about the same. I really love my reflective books, apparently. Pace is very subjective, but this is my pace graph. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Some of the books that I've been reading lately have felt very fast paced to me, but I'm not a crime thriller reader, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. A big thing has happened in my reading life since I last saw you, and I have read my first book over 500 pages for the year. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> which was The Murderer's Ape. What a bloody brilliant book. And I actually don't think I'm gonna cover this book too much in this video because I am so certain it's gonna be in my top books of the year that I shan't chew your ear off twice, but just rest assured, if you like middle grade and escapist books that are incredibly wholesome, but have a lot of plot points and a lot of like minor peril, my fiction stats are slightly skewed still. I usually read 50-50% fiction and non-fiction, uh, but because I reviewed the women's prizes books, all 16 of them, I think, there's a video about that up here, um, that's why my fiction stats are still off. Will they fix themselves by the end? I don't know, but I'm having a great time with fiction right now. So I, I don't I don't mind if those stats turn out differently this year. Storygraph have introduced a new um, format for their measuring. Um, so you can now measure whether you're reading digitally or in print. I'm gonna have to go through my Storygraph thing now and make sure that I've put in the right editions for all the books. Cause I don't, I'm not completely convinced that this 
um, format graph is accurate. I've definitely finished more than one audiobook this year, so I'll fix that for next time, no fear. And this is how my graph in general is looking. Oh, we had a big trough in February sad times, a big peak in March and April when I was reading those women's fictions books, and then we've slightly gone back to what might be called the new normal. <laughs> Uh, with my reading at least. Um, so I'm reading about five or six books a month at the moment, which is fine by me. I'm I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm happy. So before we get into the warm and fluffy minutiae of the things that I have been reading in the last three months, um, I just wanted to say, because I don't want to make a big splash about it right now, because you are watching a book video with me in it, I'm going to assume arrogantly that you are in any way interested. I have li literally, I think, how many weeks ago was it? Anyway, this month announced that I have a poetry collection coming out. So some of you might have read my poetry zine in 2019, um, Doom, Rod and Glitter. I now have a full official collection coming out with an actual publisher. Uh, it's called Bargain Bin Romcom. I promise it's going to be hijinks and um, glitter and doom all rolled together. And I'm really excited about it. There aren't any pre-links up, pre-order links up at the moment, at the time of recording. Uh, but if there are in retrospect and you're watching this later, I will leave the links. Uh, but the best way to hear more about the poetry, and maybe I'll give you some like behind the scenes snippets, is through the newsletter. So if you don't know, I send out a newsletter pretty much every month, sometimes more often. Um, I started it in lockdown and doing it weekly and now I just do it like when I can. But when you do join the newsletter, you get a free download of Lena's 20 books to read before you die or the planet does cheery uh, but you get a free download uh, of uh, like a big nice like lovely pdf of my favorite books if you so want to do a challenge where you read books that i have recommended because there are so many good ones out there and i purposely tried to put ones that weren't as commonly known or things that don't come up when you just google like best books ever best books of all time uh, ones that i personally think should be classics very excited to be like an officially published poet and do you want to see any content on that I don't want to be annoying about it but to, if you do want to see content on the poetry collection and how it came about or like stuff around the release then I'm happy to do that but I want to know what you want to see so that I'm not boring you all with my poetry because as the UK book sales show not everybody likes poetry and that's okay that's okay we'll work on you so since we last spoke I have read the reading list goggle eyes the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Rain, Against Empathy, Beautiful World, Where Are You, How to Be a Poet, Lady in the Van, The Future We Choose, The Heart Principle, The Murderer's Ape, The False Rose, which is the sequel to The Murderer's Ape. And if you love The Murderer's Ape, it's just coming out like now. So that's the sequel. It's really good. It's set in a gangster Glasgow at the turn of the century and um, Sally Jones the ape. We love it. On Freedom, The Joy of Being Selfish, Monstrous Design, The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil, A Single Rose and What Kind of Woman. The first one I want to tell you about is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Um, Sarah is one of my friends. I used to work with her um, when I worked in publishing. She's an incredible editor. Annoyingly, infuriatingly, she's also an incredible writer, it turns out. This is her first book. Uh, and if I would say this is perfect if you're somebody who's looking for something character driven, and especially if you've been in a reading slump and you've like fallen out of love with books, or you, you don't really get the love of books that everybody else has, then I think this is such a a great book to like dip your head into it's just like an immersive fishbowl to be like <laughs> it has some of my favorite things in it like it's set in a library uh it centers an elderly man and then like a young teenage girl and like a beautiful platonic friendship between them Makesh is a widower and he had a wife who always loved to read but he never read uh, and he finds himself one day wandering into a library and asking for a reading list of things that he should read uh, to get through this hard time and like escape the world and it follows just out of 
teenage kind of 20 something girl who's quite rude to him when she first meets him and then they slowly build like a bit of a friendship so it's about the whole community of people who appear around these two characters in the library and in their own homes and it's incredibly heartwarming it really is a page turner even though like obviously the stakes are low and it's only a few characters it's not like lame is but like it feels like the stakes are high the whole way through and i think that you guys would like it i just feel like if you watch my channel you will like this book of course the new sally rooney book is out i have a whole video dedicated to that so i'll leave that above we don't need to talk about that but i did read how to be a poet and i thought this was quite a more unusual one that you might not have heard of um i haven't really seen anybody talk about it on booktube before it's basically a super accessible handbook um to writing poetry yourself editing yourself and even more usefully and even more unusually at the back a huge section on how to submit to magazines and journals if you'd like your your poems to be published how to submit if you'd like your poetry collection to be published um loads of stuff about honing your poetry in a way that you're happy with it's mainly written by joe bell and jane kamain but it's got loads of guest poets in it as well so it's really useful to see all the different perspectives from independent publishers to poets and magazine journalists and like all of those nitty gritty things that you might not know about the weird structure of the poetry scene if you didn't already like have an in or know someone so i really hope books like this can stop the poetry world being so homogenous and it also just has some really great writing advice like stuff that i was underlining that i was like yes so i really think this book is a little bit one of a kind and worth noting to any of you out there who like writing poetry or like know somebody who likes writing poetry and might like a nice really really thoughtful niche gift the heart principle i haven't read like proper romance in a while and this was such a rom-com it has a neurodivergent character uh, who finds out that she's neurodivergent during the book which is something that i have never read in a book and once you've read it you're like it's weird that I've never read anything about that before in a fiction book. Like, that's weird, right? The main character is also a professional musician, which again, I've only read in memoir. It's cool when you have like a female character who's already honed their craft and is good at like what they do and then has like other problems on top of that that aren't to do with like her having a job or being good at something, you know what I mean? Um, so I think this was brilliant. I want to read the rest of the series, but um, Helen Huang, I am now a huge fan. Okay, I need you to know that I read On Freedom by Maggie Nelson, but I'm not gonna chew her off about that either because I think that I'm probably gonna quote it in quite a few videos coming up because it was just so good. Very briefly, it's four essays on... Yeah, the subtitle is Four Songs of Care and Constraint. It's about the nuances of freedom and censorship in, like, the new online space and also just, like, in the world in general and the history of freedom and how we think about it. And it's basically four essays. I'd say two of which I didn't find, like, particularly as good as the other two like not ones that i was like yes i need to underline everything one was on drugs and one was on sex but the other two one was on like the idea of freedom as played out in the right and the left and it was incredibly helpful with me like organizing my thoughts on art and how that fits into that and then the one at the end was called riding the blinds and it was all about the climate crisis and our approach to doom so again very apt for this channel but i just without going into too much detail if you're looking for a pretty academic essay collection that will really challenge you and um, then on freedom has just come out and it's great i'm not going to talk too much about single rose by muriel barbary but some of you might have seen that the author of the elegance of the hedgehog which is one of my favorite books ever came out with this new book what i will say is that it what I realised from reading it was that what I liked about The Elegance of the Hedgehog was the premise and the number of characters in the book and how they all interacted with each other and I think that was really what brought the interest and the magic. Whereas this book is a smaller book, it literally is smaller, but also it only really touches on two characters and it's it's a much more of a like less interesting premise. And that doesn't mean it's not bad, it's like badly written, it just means that it's not it doesn't have the kind of like hook and introspection and layers and, and complexities that the elegance of the hedgehog does so i was kind of not disappointed because as we said like authors don't owe me anything but i would say it's very different to the elegance of the hedgehog and 
you may not like it if you like, like automatically just because you like the elegance of the hedgehog. That's what I would say about it. If you're interested in books on the climate crisis, the future we choose, sorry, that's, this is a proof copy and it doesn't have anything on the front of it. The future we choose, which was written by the co-hosts of the Outrage and Optimism podcast, one of them being Christina Figueres, who is the woman, well, you know, one of the many people, but somebody who spearheaded the Paris Agreement and knows a, a huge a lot, of, a huge a lot, <laughs> loads. <laughs> about um, the possibilities of fixing the climate crisis and like what the dangers are as well. So the book is structured, I think, to stress you out the least, which I think is really good. Um, the first part is two worlds, so it splits. One narrative is like a few pages on like how the world could be if we carry on with all of the policies and actions that we're currently implementing and what the world would like look like in the future if that happened and like it kind of it tells a story like it's the present. Then there's one that's called The World We Must Create in which like if all these very possible realistic policies and goals are put in place the world we could be living in in the next 50 or 100 years and it describes it like it's in the present which is so useful to unlock my brain and see what was there and also the fact that it was so well researched. I thought that I was like still only halfway through the book and then I got to like here and I realised that this was all references. This part is all just receipts because it's all so well researched and true. So they're the two worlds that it lays out in the premise. Then it gives you three mindsets, like ways. So um, stubborn optimism, endless abundance and radical regeneration. And then it gives you th 10 actions to take. <laughs> What more could you want? Um, so if you haven't dared to like read a climate crisis book yet, this is a great, you can pick it up. You don't need to know too much of the premise of the climate crisis or like have read loads of articles. It's not an in-joke. It's not for the converted and it's really useful and actionable and well cited. What more could a little leader want? And then finally, I wanted to talk about The Joy of Being Selfish by Michelle Ellman. I have referenced this book a couple of times in other videos, but I've only just finished it because I've been taking my time and like underlining stuff and like letting, letting it sink in. This is a book about boundaries and why you need to set them. I obviously like don't like the main character trope and I think that sometimes boundaries are used in the wrong way, but somebody who uses boundaries in an incredible way and explains herself in this incredibly approachable yet nuanced way like it's not I think sometimes people can just create slogans and erase the layers that are in a topic but Michelle if you follow her on Instagram she just has this great way of like explaining things really succinctly without oversimplifying them and doing them a disservice basically so this book is really practical I think sometimes when it comes to these like kind of life coach topics Things can get quite memoiry, which can be really interesting, um, but this is really practical and that's something that I think sets it apart from a lot of the books that feel useful but then when you've put them down you're not really sure what you've learnt. Whereas obviously Michelle does share some of her experiences but she has good boundaries so she doesn't share more than she likes. But it's really about like where the thoughts about boundaries come from, how they play out in loads of different scenarios in real life and at the back she literally gives you text templates for you to set boundaries in a kind but nice way. Like things you can actually like just copy out or like tweak for your own tone of voice. But like the fact that there are actual text templates to solve <laughs> interpersonal issues <laughs> This is gonna save me so much time. So this is something that I was gonna read and then give away to somebody else. But when I finished it, I was like, I think I'm gonna keep this around. I feel like it's gonna be a good one to have on the shelf and then like grab when a bad thing happens. <laughs> it's a good pep talk to have in your toolkit for when things get rough. What have you been reading? Please tell me in the comments below. I love a good book gossip. Uh, remember to sign up to my newsletter if you want to be notified about things to do with my poetry collection, Bargain Bin Romcom. Um, thank you so much to the Gumption Club for making these videos possible and if you like this video, God's sake. And if you like this video, I think that you might like some of these videos. What do you think? Try one. See if I'm right. Go on. Play me. <sighs> Frog's not out.